joining us now is the Bottomless Toy Chest, and their executive director, Mickey Geiswhite, is now with us on the Megacast. Mickey, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having you on. So uh, let's start off. Tell us a little bit about your 501c3 nonprofit organization. Well, the Bottomless Toy Chest is a 501c3 nonprofit organization devoted to do delivering toys, crafts, and hands-on activities to hospitalized pediatric cancer patients. And our mission is to promote a positive state of mind in young cancer and blood disorder patients by giving them something empowering to focus on while they are hospitalized and going through treatment. Um, so we are extremely delighted to be part of, you know, the larger mission of Share Detroit um, because they're helping us get the word out about what we do and how people can help us locally. We're joined by Mickey Geiswhite. She is the executive director of the Bottomless Toy, Toy Chest, joining us today on the Megacast as one of our Share Detroit supported uh, charities and nonprofits as we approach Giving Tuesday. And so um, you're the executive director of the Bottomless Toy Chest, but what was the purpose behind, or what was the story at least, behind the founding of this organization? Because we have a lot of organizations that are uh, delivering different goods or different services to kids that are sick in the hospital for a number of different reasons, not only. Uh, cancer, blood disorders, but other diseases and conditions as well. What ultimately led to the founding of the Bottomless sure. Toy Chest? Sure. I uh, started the Bottomless Toy Chest after my own son went through eight extremely difficult months of cancer treatment. Um, so when he was 12 years old, I, our family heard the words, no family wants to hear, which are, your son has cancer. And um, he went from being a completely normal, healthy 12-year-old boy doing normal 12-year-old things to out of the blue, being diagnosed with an extremely aggressive form of leukemia. Um, and it had already reached stage four by the time he was diagnosed. So as you can imagine, our entire life was turned upside down. Um, he was pulled out of school. He was hospitalized. Um, he spent most of the time in the hospital. And, you know, um, as a parent, you want to be able to fix things, obviously. And uh, cancer is something you cannot fix. So I, you know, I spent as much time as I possibly could with him in the hospital day and night. But I just sat there going, you know, this is really, really difficult situation. And what can I do to help my son, you know, feel better and try to get through his treatment? And so I found that one thing I could do is bring him activities and toys to do while he was in the hospital getting treatment. And um, so I brought him Lego sets and I brought him, you know, things he could draw, things he could create, all things that he could do rather than all of the things that he couldn't do, you know, seeing his friends, getting out of bed, pretty much doing anything. Um, and I found that the more I could do to keep him busy and engaged and focused on positive things that he could do, the better he responded to his treatment. And, um, you know, it made it easier uh, for nurses to do their work, for the doctors to do their work. Um, it made it better for my son, and it ultimately made it better for every single person involved. Um, and so I promised myself, if we ever got to the other side of this, I really, really wanted to create a program that could help empower children with toys the way I had seen toys empower my own son when he went through treatment. Um, and so I'm gonna jump to the happy end of the story, which is miraculously, my son did recover and um, completely. And I um, really, what started as a one hospital toy drive, um, developed into a year-round program which now operates in hospitals all throughout Michigan, uh, as well as hospitals in Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Texas, um, Oregon. We were even shipping overseas. Um, but we're all now in 18 hospitals and uh, we'll deliver over 30,000 uh, interactive toy experiences this year. Um, 
So a few things about our program that I think are a little bit different. We're not just a holiday toy program. We're a year around program. I always say, you know, cancer does not end when the holiday lights come down and neither does our program. We are there every single week of the year providing toy experiences to um, children who are critically ill. Um, we have a bunch of different programs associated with our you know, main toy delivery program. Um, and something else I think that differentiates, uh, different, differentiates us from um, maybe some other programs uh, because you asked what makes us a little bit different. Sure. Every single toy that is delivered uh, from the bottomless toy chest is gift wrapped in cellophane and it's tied with a ribbon and it has a tag on it that says from your friends at the bottomless toy chest. So we do this for a number of reasons. First, it's to keep the toys clean because you know most of the kids that we see aren't even able to use the hospital playrooms that other kids are able to use because their immune systems are so low. So it keeps the items clean. Um, it gives children a choice and an opportunity to make a decision in all of the, um, you know, in a in a situation where all those decisions are pretty much made for them. And you know, lastly, who does not like opening presents? Um, a visit from the bottomless toy chest is like a you know welcome relief in a day filled with difficult things and um, needle pokes and um, other difficult procedures I mean we're it's like it's every day it's sort of like your birthday or a holiday we come in and we get we provide an emotionally empowering service to children who are having a really really difficult time health wise so these are really difficult situations for the children, obviously, but also for the families uh, dealing with a severe illness in your in your yes. child, and especially over the last uh, 20 months and counting that we've been dealing with COVID-19, that, that had to have made that toll that much tougher. How did it impact, uh, how has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted or, or changed in some ways the operations of the bottomless toy chest and how have you been able to persevere through the challenges of the past 20 months plus to continue these vital services for children? Sure, that, that's just such a great question because I think for everybody, the world kind of stopped, right? Didn't it? Yeah. About 20 months ago now, it's hard to believe, when COVID hit. And yeah, toy experience program, we're going, how are we going to make our programming work? How are the kids going to get the toys? How are, um, you know, how is everything going to work? But at the toy chest, you know, we're all about our program is based on what we can do versus what we can't do. I mean, that's what we try to impart to the kids we serve. So we really did switch up our programming. Um, instead of in many cases, because of hospital protocols, we couldn't do in-person deliveries anymore, obviously, um, for, out of safety and health concerns. So we pretty much switched over to a delivery service where instead of you know, going room to room with our hospital, with our cart, we would come to the hospital with our van, we would unload, we would work with the social workers and um, nurses, deliver toys directly to them, unload at the hospital door, then they would be responsible for, um, you know, delivering the toys for us. Um, we also um, have, a bunch of other really fun programs throughout the year aside from our delivery program which like i said we handled by giving pulling up with a van or you know shipping things by mail to the hospitals um other programs that we have like our tons of toys program where we typically transform oncology waiting rooms into winter wonderlands and make a big party for the kids and you know the families come and you can do crafts and games and you get as i said tons of toys well that wasn't going to work last year and um so what we did is we instead of having a party in the clinic we literally created individual little parties for each patient that we serve um and had them delivered 
to the patients in the hospital. So that meant every kid got a, um, a few toys, every kid got a craft project, every kid we also got a, uh, we have our volunteer Santa who did a video and there was a QR code on the um, toy that they received so you could have a message from Santa. We also have other products. That's just one one way we switch things up. Another way we switch things up is by um, doing, we have a huge event called our um, red carpet movie event, which we typically every year have um, at the Imagine Theater in Royal Oak, where over 100 patients and family members come, have a viewing of a current movie. Afterwards, we would have a big party, pizza party, face painting, all that. Well, that wasn't going to work, and it hasn't worked now for two years. But I think we've actually problem solved and made a really, really cool adjustment for the families and they love it. So what we do now is we have a red carpet movie event at our warehouse and we have an individual party for every family. Every 30 minutes a family comes to our warehouse. This is during the summer. The red carpet is rolled out. We have um, another organization provides Disney uh, characters, superheroes and princesses to meet the kids. Every family then gets to do, you know, theme movie themed crafts and projects, and then leaves with big baskets filled with toys, their favorite toys. Um, for the parents get things, the siblings get things, the patients get things. In the end, um, and they all get a gift certificate to be so they can um, you, you go on, uh, you know, when they get home and watch a movie. So, all of these things take a really terrible situation, you know, going through cancer and being critically ill or in hospice care. And we try to make, create normal, fun activities for the family that they'll always remember no matter what happens. So those are just a few ways we switch things up. We also have been able to, um, during COVID, which has been really nice, provide some of our toys and activities to, um, organizations that are dealing specifically with families who are going through COVID. So not necessarily cancer patients, but um, organizations like Sacred Heart Rehabilitation and uh, CAST Community Social Services. Uh, I have a whole list of them. The Downtown Boxing Gym, Youth Program, Life Skills Rehabilitation Center, The Lighthouse, Haven, Detroit Rescue Mission, Zayman Allen International. Um, these are all other organizations serving populations with families impacted by COVID that we've been able to help through the pandemic. You know, because in the end, we're one huge community trying to get through this together. Um, and I can't, you know, in our case, the toy chest, I can't stress how difficult it is to, you know, have a child going through a life-threatening illness now during a life-threatening pandemic. So I think anything we can do to brighten their spirits and help make the families feel better and um, you know, be in a better emotional state of mind, the better it is for everyone. We're joined by Mickey Geis-White. She is the executive director and the founder of The Bottomless Toy Chest. You can learn more information about this nonprofit by going to their website at bottomlesstoychest.org. Again, that is bottomlesstoychest.org. And so uh, we're in a season where people are looking to give, they're looking to volunteer, they're, they're looking to donate. Uh, at this moment in time, what are the most important resources that are needed for from your organization in order to continue your services? Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, well, we're a toy organization, right? And we get the bulk of our toys that we distribute distribute throughout the year during the holiday season. And if you happen to have been watching the news lately, which everybody has, all we hear about every day is there is a shortage of toys and there aren't as many toys as there have been in the past. So we really, really, really um, need toys. We have a toy list that you can find on our website, on the Share Detroit website. We make it really easy. You can order through Amazon. So obviously toys are a huge thing. Another way people can help obviously is by donating financially. We're a small organization um, 
and like everybody else, you know, we're struggling to to make ends meet and keep our program going. Um, we have a very small dedicated team um, and we need to keep our warehouse going. We need to be able to buy wrapping supplies and all that good stuff. So that's another way people can help. Also, I mentioned every single item we deliver is gift wrapped, right? Well, that's 30,000 toys a year. And I can tell you the five of us at the toy chest can't do that ourselves. We count on school groups and businesses and, um, um, you know, the entire community to make that happen throughout the year. So after um, January 1, we have all of our toys and we would really, really love for groups to help us with um, with getting to with getting those toys wrapped so we can get them safely delivered to the hospitals. Um, and then, you know, uh, volunteering at events that we're gonna be having throughout the year. That's another way people can help. So these are really some great key ways I think people can get involved and help us. You can learn more information about all the ways you can help the Bottomless Toy Chest as well as how you can donate by going to their website at bottomlesstoychest.org. Click on their Get Involved link to find out ways that you can get involved in some of their volunteer opportunities or, or helping uh, with some of their, their distribution events as well. And then donate, of course, for donations and shop to be able to buy some of the toys that they're looking for as well. And then you can also go to sharedetroit.com uh, to learn more about their organization and, and other nonprofits and charities throughout our local area. And so uh, we're Approaching Giving Tuesday, Mickey, um, how important are these kinds of national or worldwide efforts to support charities and nonprofits? Just how much of an impact do giving days like that have on organizations like yours? You know, there are so many wonderful organizations out there doing great work, and we're one of many. But I can just tell you, and I think I speak for many organizations, we are you know it's small organizations like like the bottomless toy chest and like others that are you know doing big things in the community and serving certain populations and we really really can't do the work we do without giving and without the more so every single penny that comes in goes directly into our program and helps serve children who are going through cancer treatment and children in hospice care and children with blood disorders. I can't stress how important a day like Giving Tuesday is. I mean, it kind of means everything to us. So we're, we really appreciate all of the support that we can get on that day. And, and obviously throughout the year, we're, as I said earlier, we're not just a holiday organization, we're here um, every single day, bringing toys, joy, and hope to sick kids. Mickey, uh, just another couple minutes with you before we'll say goodbye today. Anything else that would be important at this time for our audience to know about the Bottomless Toy Chest or other things that are coming up in the future uh, that they should be on the lookout for from your organization? Um, well, you know, we, we do have some very specific toy needs, and um, I know I'm, I, I think when we think about cancer patients, we pediatric cancer, we think probably ages three to 10. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out is that um, children can literally be born with cancer. We, we serve children, we serve infants. So we serve from infant age, you know, zero, uh, pretty much right, you know, after giving birth, all the way through another huge group of children not children anymore, but teens and young adults that we serve. We serve, so we're from zero up to age 22. And I think um, a lot of the times babe, the, the infants and also that teen group, which is a huge portion of the, the population that we serve get uh, not overlooked intentionally, obviously, but people just don't know that, yeah, we've got 16 year olds and 17 year olds that are sitting in a hospital bed that um you know mom and dad are doing the best they can but the family is financially strapped and overwhelmed by just getting through treatment and so when we're looking to donate to the toy chest those you know 
we like getting things for all groups, but sometimes I think that if we could focus maybe a little on the, the infants and really, really on those teen girls and boys, young men and young women, we appreciate those, those gifts very much. Well, Mickey, we appreciate your time. Thank you for telling us more about Bottomless Joy Chest. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you.